Uh, they're live on, yeah, we're live on Facebook now. Nobody's going to be able to see our faces. It's just going to be blank for some time. Just ready for us to go. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I mean, I can join the audio whenever you need to. Um, we're, we're ready whenever. Once obviously you start, um, we'll go from there. Yeah, no problems. You're sharing your PowerPoint with us now, aren't you? You've got your screen up at the moment. That's good. Yeah. I've shared our screen now, so you want to share yours, that's okay. Yeah. Now, as soon as we, this is just to make people aware that we're going to be starting soon. And as soon as we start, then everything will be over to you. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Okay, yeah. so... um. Okay, so that's obviously, so the intro, the welcome, and then you first, Kemi, isn't it? Yeah. You first, obviously, to introduce yourself, talk about the conference, and then obviously introduce the two Johns, and then they'll, they will obviously do their introduction. Mm -hmm. They are, and then take it from there. So obviously, I'll announce that, you know, there'll be, you know, there'll be room for questions at the end of the presentation, but they can also, you know, put questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Yep. Right, I still can't see you on Facebook, even though it says live on Facebook. It is. It is showing on our Facebook here that it's live. On your, on your, um, is it on your personal page? On my personal page, and I'm going to be sharing it to you. I'm going to see if I can do a comment to you underneath. It shouldn't be showing me, it should be showing the intro. Oh, it's sharing the screen. Why? Because it's all I can share the screen and still check the Facebook. No, don't Okay, worry. I can see you now. Yeah, thank you. There's, we can see Kemi. We can't see you, Sister Tola. <laughs> You're not meant to see me. <laughs> You're not meant to, yeah. I think we're fine now. What can you see now, Auntie? I can see the welcome to Climax family. Exactly, that's what we want to see. I'm about to show now on my um Hear me? Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. Loud okay. and clear. What, what uh, Facebook page is it going out on? Do you know? Or your one, is it? Uh, it's my one. Uh, Kemi Tamide Johnson. I'm just going to look see what we can see. Yeah, so we know what we're monitoring now. In. 
<laughs> um, do you want me to share it to your page? If you can, that'd be great. Okay. Does that have the ability to go and out on that, does it? No. Quite interesting. We're starting shortly. We'll be starting in the next three minutes. So, yeah. I, I, I couldn't tag you on Facebook because here is uh, on your page, but I'll send you the WhatsApp link, John. I think we can start now. We can't hear you. Hear me? No, yeah, we can hear I think we can okay. start now. Okay. Hello, hi everybody and welcome. Welcome to the, to the Climax Family Hub's annual virtual online conference. Today's conference is themed around improving family safety online. So we're going to talk about how we can keep our family, our children, our, even ourselves safe online at this conference. And we will be hearing from our two internet e-safety officers. But before we get to them, I want to introduce our host for this event. And she's going to obviously tell us, tell us a little bit about herself. And she's also going to tell us about the event and what to expect. So please join me as we welcome Kemi Tomide Johnson, the founder of the Climax Family Hub. Kemi, please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about today's conference and what we can ex expect today. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that uh, sweet voice and the intro. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, I don't know who can help. I think I've made a mock of the Facebook Live I'm still sharing on my screen. I don't know if it's me or somebody else can see her speaking. So, but if you can just help us. Uh, yes, I, it's, it's, it's live on Facebook. It's, you're, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, yes, fair, it's yeah, fine. I just see your face. I just wanted to be sure that we are 
Yeah, on course. Yes, thank you again. And uh, my name is Kemi. I like to be called Kemi and um, uh, Samide Johnson, of course. Uh, I can't get uh, enough of that name just because it's, uh, it's more of a beauty of a family to me. And um, I'm Idowu Adesoya initially. Now I'm, you know, migrating from a family into another, forming a family. But at the back of this is the thing that always resonates for, to me, and which I think everyone watching tonight and everyone part of this panel and what have you uh, can resonate with. And that is the bond that creates us all. And at the back of that bond is what we call the family. And uh, as the situation is now, in the last 10 years, our world has changed. Things are moving very fast. The way we grew up is not the way we are raising our children. So the bond is being weakened day by day uh, by the good, good, good social, you know, internet and social media. I mean, there's so many benefits to it. Like we can see you right now in from the comfort of our room, we can mingle with you, speak with you, educate in fact, and all is made possible with social media, internet. But at the back of this also is the harm and the dangers that is causing to many families. Nowadays, especially, we have seen a growing increase in the number of children being radicalized online, number of children who are sexually uh, uh, exploited online, you know, family tearing apart, even us as adults doing things that we're not supposed to do on social media, on internet, and just because we don't have the adequate knowledge and what have you to manage this. It is on the back of this that uh, Climate's Family Hope, to which I am the sheer and the founder of, as uh, kindly uh, implored, I would say implore because it's like I have to beg for this evening to come on board, you know, the two Johns, and they have been fantastic. We've had them before. They are super, super fantastic. And I, I, I tell you what, I just felt like, because I have had a lot of comment, I have had a lot of concern, that it's quite important that we address this issue to wish the children who are themselves ex policemen I will allow themselves to, to introduce themselves when the time comes to it, to come on board and just educate us and empower us on how to be a better parent a better parent to not just uh, you know, our kids, but to the kids that we see in the community to be able to educate them and pr probably cascade whatever we're gonna learn tonight to each and everyone within our network. So I wouldn't want to ramble on too much. Climbers Family Hub is a, 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 a community interest group that is largely focused on empowering parents to nurture their children, to support them, to raise better children, children that will be able to maximize their potential, children that will grow up to become somebody that we can all be proud of as a community, not just as an individual family now. It's one thing for us to succeed as a family, but it's another thing for us to succeed together as a community of which an Af African community and the black race generally have been labeled with all negativity and what have you. It is to this effect that we are working with experts within the community to say, you know what, we can put a stop to the stigma, we can put a stop to the negativity that we are often labeled with. So join us tonight, adjust your seats, get a cup of tea and let's roll together. I'm here to learn as well. Like I've got teenagers, they are watching in the next room as well. They are grown teenagers. So if you have very young <coughs> kids because of the content, I know they'll be addressing it later on, but please, uh, just follow the guidance on this and we'll hope be safe. You see me again at the very end of the event, but for now, I'll hand you to Tola Onibanjo, to who is going to be anchoring tonight and just follow whatever she says and we'll be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Kemi. Thank you very much for that. Right, so we're going to move forward, and it's also we're also I'm also going to be introducing the two Johns. But before I get to the two Johns, one thing I do want to say is that you know I've had the privilege of hosting this event 
you know, a couple of years, for a couple of years with chemists. I'm familiar with the two Johns. And one thing that I will say, and as I was telling parents to log in online, watch it on Facebook or however you want to catch it, that is they are they give so much information, you know, and the information is not only for children, it's actually for even us adults. You know, somebody like myself that loves taking selfies. I mean, when they were saying just by taking a selfie and posting it, your your location can just be, you know, can just be found right there and then. I just thought to myself, and it's just a matter of simple settings, you know, adjusting your settings so that, you know, you it doesn't now say your, your whole entire address of where you've taken that selfie. And it's so important to keep our children safe online because our children use their phones, they take pictures all the time. And if, they, if they're not aware that their location can just be found out just like that. Imagine, imagine a youngster posting a, a selfie online and saying, home alone having fun you know now that person knows that they're home alone and actually knows where they are home alone so the information is is very vital for parents as well not just for our children but you know i've invited mums parents dads grand grandparents aunts uncles to come and listen because this information is not information that you just see flying about or information that you're just going to know about we have to be aware, we have to know, we have to be informed. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, even though we couldn't meet physically like we have done over the years, you know, Kemi was still able to bring this conference online so that we could still benefit and still hear the knowledge from the two Johns. So one thing I will want to say is, you know, as you're listening, if you have any questions, please type it in the bottom in the Q&A section at the end. The questions will be taken at the end because we want we want the Johns to go through the whole presentation and then we'll take questions at the end. Uh, they'll answer any questions that you have, just type them in the comment box. You know, feel free to drop comments. You know, if there's anything that you want to comment about as they're talking, drop it in the comment box at the end. We'll go through them. But without further ado, I'd like to welcome on the two Johns. You know, I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, they, they might say I'm John one and I'm John two. So when you're addressing a question, <laughs> you can write in the comment box. This one is for John one or this one is for John two, but they can answer. Both of them can answer any question. So you can just put the question to, to in the box and either of them will take it up. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome on the two Johns to introduce themselves and take us through today's session. I'm taking notes. <laughs> okay, um, thank you so much for that fantastic um, introduction to us and um, thanks ever so much for inviting us to talk tonight. Um, my name is John, the other John I'm actually going to call my imaginary friend. He is in the room with me and I think Kenny's been talking to him this evening. But he's the guy pressing all the buttons so... I'm the one going to try and break it <laughs> off screen. <laughs> yeah, so if the sound goes a bit weird, it's down to John. And if I suddenly go like this, it's because he's done something weird with the camera, but um, hopefully we're going to be okay. And we're going to take you on a journey this evening where we're talking about trying to keep our young people safe online. And although both of us spent many, many years working in the police and um, specifically as detectives dealing with paedophiles that would target our kids online, we honestly think that tonight most of what we're talking about is what we're finding from children that we talk to on a daily basis. So for example, we were in a primary school yesterday talking to loads of young people. And ever since um, the summer, we've actually been running online sessions for children. So I'm not making it up when I say we spoke to thousands of young people in the last two months. And I'm sure that we're gonna share a lot of that with you tonight. Also, because we're quite big on Facebook, we get parents coming to us every day really with issues that we then look at. And I guess what I'm saying is we should be bang up to date. Um, we're not trying to scare you. We're trying to give you information that helps you take your child on an appropriate journey through the um, sort of world that they're growing up in, really. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to talk about child sex offenders. I forget that out there straight away. And I think you've got to be hidden in a dark place if you haven't realised that these guys do look for their kids online. I think the problem is traditionally... Um, adults talk to their children about strange danger. That's an old fashioned saying, I think. And um, if you ask any child, like the children we spoke to yesterday, we said, what does um, strange danger mean to you? And all of them said it was about a man in a van with a bag of sweets. You couldn't make it up. We actually um, said to them yesterday, we said, what color's the van? And they all said, oh, it's white. <laughs> so the problem at the minute is all of our kids are thinking this imaginary van is the risk. The risk is actually the people that they're communicating with on the internet. And um, when they go after little guys, 
it takes two forms really some of them just sit in their house eating their dinner in their dining room this is the bad guys and they've got an ipad in front of them and what they're doing is watching their kids on apps like TikTok, putting their finger on their video and collecting them and showing them with other weirdos so a lot of that is going on also if you've got some more scary people they are normally trying to talk to our kids in the games and then they're quite anxious to get the kid out of the game and then talk on a third party app. And we'll talk quite a bit about that this evening. Um, another area we're going to talk about is influencers. And um, perhaps we're going to question the viewpoints that are being put into our children's heads. So what you might not realize is your eight, nine, 10 year olds or older might be getting some really strong opinions about things going on in the world at the moment. And um, unfortunately, some of them opinions might not be the family sort of um, viewpoint. They might actually be getting them from people online and no one in the family has worked out why this young person's getting really angry with things and that, and it might be an outside influence. We'll talk about that today. Also, I want you to think about gangs and drugs and things like that. And um, that is a real concern for, for us because we work with a lot of really um, cool gang workers that we really enjoy working with and we work with them very, very closely. But I think what John and I have realised in recent times is most of the gang workers that were around were in gangs over five years ago. And unfortunately, we don't think it is the same today as five years ago. Some of the mechanics are, but when it comes to recruitment, it is very, very different. So once upon a time, if you um, kept a close rein on your kids and if you've got a nine, 10 or 11 year old that isn't allowed to wander the streets of the evening, you might be thinking that you're keeping them fairly safe. But we were quite alarmed yesterday, for example, talking in a primary school with um, 10 and 11 year olds or nine, 10, 11 year olds. And we asked them, we said, how many of you have seen drugs for sale on Instagram or Snapchat? And it was about 16 or 17 of them had seen drugs for sale on Instagram or Snapchat. And we asked them to explain what they'd seen. And what we heard was awful. They were actually really knowing what they were talking about. They turned around and said, well, the um, if it's on Instagram, it's only going to be out for a day or two. Not going to be out for long, presumably, because people don't want to get caught. You order the drugs online and they get delivered to your house. And you're like, you must be joking. You know, it'll be put in the front garden. And we said, OK. I said, how much would that cost? And apparently what we're being told is a lot at the time, the young people don't actually pay for the drugs, which seems weird, doesn't it? But the way that they do pay is they shout out on social media. So if you've got quite a fan base on Instagram or quite a lot of people that watch you, the expectation is that you then shout out. We then said, do the young people always take the drugs that they buy? And these kids yesterday said no. So on the face of it, that's a positive, isn't it? Yeah, they're getting drugs, and they're not taking them. But what do you reckon they're doing? What they told us was they're actually reselling. So they will create their own Instagram account, a burner account, they call it, and then they start supplying. So I think everything we say tonight, if we're not careful, we get stuck in this sort of e-safety idea that it's all about sexual predators. Please, when you're listening to us tonight, make sure you're thinking about gangs, you're thinking about influencers and anyone really that can get into our kids' world. And even on county lines, I'm sure some of you guys have heard people talk about this before. Now, how do you think that if you've got a gang in London that wants to get drugs into a small village somewhere, they dispatch someone to the small village and um, give them a phone and then they basically set up shop. What no one's talking about is how they get referenced into the village. And that will often be a case of what they're looking for is what is known as a young carer. That might be a 11, 12, 13 year old young person that has got a, perhaps a single parent who's got an addiction. That addiction might be an alcohol addiction or something like that. And what you realize is the kid's happy place is school. They go home in the evening and literally from the moment they walk through the door, they're the one doing the cooking, they're the one doing the washing up and they're actually making sure that mum goes to bed at some stage and then they start to live. They go online, they start talking and that is where they end up meeting the bad guys. And the bad guys ultimately will use that young person as the point of reference wherever they want to get into. That might be a borough in London where this person's shouting out to the adult gang world and all of a sudden they're involved. So I think we're really making the point that it's not just about worrying about the kids when they're walking around on the street. Yeah, all of this stuff is playing out in your house. So please be on top of it. Yeah, if they're talking about people they don't normally talk about, it could be 
scary. Um, we talk a little bit about sexting. We're not going to dwell on that tonight, but if um, we're talking about teenagers, then we think the biggest issue is the way that parents deal with the situation. Now, I know it sounds a bit strange, but um, what we realised going into lockdown back in March, so you had two 15 year olds, a boy and a girl in a relationship and they started um, experimenting with sex to some level, maybe not to a total level, but they're experimenting. Then overnight, all of a sudden they were told that they couldn't leave their house and lockdown kicked in. Do we think that they stopped that sexual activity? And in truth, they didn't. And what we're now realizing is lots of them took it online. And these might be young people that wouldn't normally share anything online, but all of a sudden they were using FaceTime for that intimate discussion. And unfortunately there's boys in this country that then video capture the girls. And that's only just starting to rear up now, this content is getting out there. And I think our question to ask is, if you've got a 14 or 15 year old girl who's got pictures suddenly appear online, how are they feeling at that moment in their timeline? Because we would say that they're absolutely devastated. They're on the floor and they don't know what to do. And then when the police get involved, if they get involved, then the family get involved. How do we think that most dads in this country react when their daughter is caught out like that? Because what we've realized is they go nuts. Yeah, very often, they lose the plot a bit, they get really upset, they're really disappointed, they might um, uh, almost sort of um, disown the young person. And our question here is, how low does that young person now go? And that is where you get young people hurting themselves, maybe um, committing suicide and things like that. So we're begging with parents really to realise that the world today is so different to what we remember growing up and our kids will make mistakes. Many of us made mistakes when we were young, but it wasn't out there in the world of social media. So we've got to be careful as parents that we don't push our kids over the edge. And um, that's, that's really, really important. Um, and when we talk about parents pushing our kids over the edge, I'm thinking about a programme that was on last week. I don't know if anyone saw it. You guys might have done. It was um, on Panorama. BBC on, B- on BBC. BBC. Yeah. And they were talking about TikTok. And obviously we're going to talk about TikTok tonight. And um, we watched the programme and we thought, quite a useful program because it was talking about some of the content really good elements in there wasn't really it? good elements and we, we were quite interested listening to it but what ruined it for us if we're honest was the last 30 seconds and it says staff but they surmised the program and what they actually said was in summary we wouldn't let anyone like a child online until they're 13 and we were like excellent Okay then, so how are we actually going to nurture the young guys to sort of um, live their online world? Because I don't know, I don't want to offend anyone, but we tend to call parents that do that clifftop parents. It sounds a bit offensive, doesn't it? Well, what a clifftop parent is, is a parent that without a doubt loves their kid. They absolutely love their kid. That's all of us then. Yeah, you might be paying for extra tutoring. All of your savings might be invested in the education of this young person there. You absolutely love them and you put your arm around them and you're holding them really, really tight. Excellent. Every day. And there's rules, I don't think the rules. There is a rule. There's definitely a rule. rule. The rule is you can't have Snapchat to your 13. There you go. Yeah, you can't have Snapchat to your 13. It's like being told you can't drink to your 18. No, I never did that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Every day, a parent is walking forward. Every day, Cliff Top Kid is getting older. Yeah. and older mm-hmm. and older eventually cliff top parent gets to a cliff and their toes are dangling over the edge of the cliff they look above them and there's a sign that says 13. what does cliff top parent do next Got two choices i reckon mm. they could naively keep walking and i promise you if they do if you do that as a parent you've lost the plot they are going to go behind your back there but so many parents at that stage go whoa they drop their kids off the cliff they hit the ground quite hard dust herself down and then they go nuts yeah so if they've not been on snapchat to that day by that night they're going to have so many random people added on it it's ridiculous and i promise you that is when the problems really kick in if we had time we could give you eight or nine examples of where that's gone disastrously wrong we'll probably mention one later on in the presentation that happened to a 13 year old um, girl that was a cliff top kid where it all went really wrong for so what we think is as a parent, you've got to get involved at some stage because if you were teaching your kid to swim, we don't think you would go up to a swimming pool, chuck your kid in and walk away and let them get on with it. Hopefully not. If you were teaching them to ride a bike, we don't think you would put them on a balance bike and then just 
walk off. Yeah, in both of them situations, you would nurture them. We don't think if in year six you've decided to let your kid go to school on their own for the first time, you're going to do that without loads of measures in place because you wouldn't do it. But for some reason, when it comes to the internet, the most right, dangerous yeah. thing our little Jim, guys are going to do. Jim, we don't yeah. get involved. And what we're saying tonight is work out where that's on the timeline. You're going to introduce your kid to that world. Now, in my in my world, because I've got a five-year-old son, a nine-year-old daughter, and a teenager. So if I pick on my five-year-old son, I now let him on the tightest restrictions on kids' YouTube, and I let him play Minecraft. So I guess in my world, he's now on the journey. So I've had to tie a rope around his waist, obviously, not literally, and I'm gradually letting it out. By the time he's 13, if I've got my job right, I'm letting go because then he's sorted, he's been nurtured. But we do worry about where the journey starts for some people. So we were looking at eBay recently, weren't we, John? And um, I don't know about you guys, but we were quite shocked by this. But if you've got them, then so be it. But these are out there on eBay. They're actually being sold in Essex at the moment. And these are like potties with attached attachments for iPads and that. I mean, what next? So I, I don't know what to say about that. So if that's you, then you've actually got to start nurturing at the age of one. But if you're if that makes you jealous as an adult, you can actually get adult versions of these, which I, I can't actually believe this, but there you go. So that but being serious, you need to get your starting point and then get involved. And that hopefully that's what we're going to help you with this evening. But be aware that if you're a really strict parent, our experience on the ground is that your kids will probably find a way of going behind your back. And if I just pick on the last school we were at, so yesterday we were working in this lovely school. Um, it was a Catholic school in Essex. The kids were absolutely fantastic. And we asked them lots of questions because we're big on asking questions. We're nosy, we are. And um, I guess what we said was, how many of you, when you go home at night, and this is from year three and above, so that makes it about eight. We said to them, how many of you, when you go home at night, have access to a device in your bedroom that your parents are unaware of. And we were shocked when 70% of them said they did have. And they were talking about old iPod touches, old phones, basically things that yeah. are around in the house somewhere. We then said, how many of you, if your parents turn off the internet at night or have insanely good blocking software, how many of you would still be able to go online? And you won't believe me when I say this. It was about 90% of them, nine out of 10 of them, had worked out how to go online. And we said, how are you doing that? Uh, by far the most common one yesterday was I've uh, gone on a neighbor's Wi-Fi. As in, they've been around the neighbors before, gone onto their Wi-Fi, and when your one goes off at home, they automatically go onto that. You couldn't make it up. We had a little seven-year-old girl not so long ago. What she said to us was that um, she had an iPod touch in her bedroom that mummy didn't know about. And um, she said she was getting online, even though her mum turned the in and off. So this is a seven-year-old kid. We said, how are you doing that? And she said that at seven o'clock before she goes to bed, she asked mummy if she could borrow her iPhone to play Candy Crush. In the school we were in yesterday, we said to the children, do you think that girl liked Candy Crush? Once they stopped laughing, they said, no. They said she's obviously going into the settings and turned on a hotspot. Guys, you cannot make this up. Yeah, the way they're getting around. And how many kids yesterday said their parents had got them a 4G iPad, but didn't realise the iPad had 4G. We assume most of their parents bought them um, on a credit agreement from people like EE and Vodafone, where bundled into that is the 4G connection. It would appear that a lot of parents don't realise their kids actually have a 4G iPad. I find that hard to believe, but um, you might want to check in case you have. And then lastly, on these questions, we said, say your parents deleted your favourite app, and um, we were talking about TikTok specifically. We said, if your parents delete it, that means put a finger on it, make it shake and disappear. Yeah, none of you have done that, have you? I made it shake and disappear. And um, we said, how many of you would still use it? And it was pretty much the whole class. And I can't say less than that. Yeah, it was literally was like a total, they looked at us as if we were mad and said, well, yeah, all we do is reinstall it, use it, and then uninstall it. And then quite a few yesterday said that what they would do is hide it either behind another app or hide it in a utilities folder so their parents didn't see it. The other app they were talking about was Calculator Plus, which looks exactly the same as the calculator on the iPad. They hide the actual calculator on the iPad and then have this 
thing. Yeah, and all you have to do is put the code in it, hit the percentage symbol, and you've got a private browser that they can use. You can't make this up, yeah? So please be aware, if you're a really strict parent, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're safe and all. And what it will guarantee is if your kid comes across bad stuff, then they're not gonna be able to talk to you. And arguably that is a, even, an even worse situation. There's some, um, think about things we ask the kids. So if we put a screen up now, we're gonna show you a load of things that we spoke about yesterday. I'm hoping that many of you know these or some of the younger people watching this, um, there's about five or six pictures seven, going up. Seven, seven. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you would know all of them. If there's any youngsters watching it, I'm hoping that they would smash it out of the park. But um, how many do you know? And like yesterday in the school we were working in, all of the year groups from um, year three and above just smashed it out of the park. Like, and on one of them, the game in the bottom left-hand corner, they went absolutely insane for. So we'll talk about that time. In fact, everything on that screen that you can see, we will talk about in this presentation. And um, I'm gonna start by talking about TikTok. And if you guys have heard us talking before, you'll know that we're worried about paedophiles and how they interact uh, with TikTok. And um, I think we spoke about that a lot. Later on in the presentation, we'll tell you how we think we would set it up as a parent. But essentially, if you let your kid on TikTok and they've got a public account and they post videos, you can guarantee that plenty of weirdos are getting their finger, putting it on their video and grabbing them. Yeah, so we've always spoke about that. That is um, goes with it, really. But what we haven't spoke so much about is the content on TikTok and how that can influence our young people. And I think what really got us thinking about this was um, right at the end of the summer holidays. It was literally the Sunday before the schools went back. I remember that well because I've been homeschooling my two kids all through the summer. So to me, I felt like having a party on that particular night. So I thought, yes, my kids are going back to school. But my party mood was ruined, really, because we were looking at TikTok and we realised that some person in America had committed suicide on Facebook Live. You couldn't make this up. And um, unfortunately, a lot of horrid people in the world had screen captured the video of the guy killing himself. And then, like you do, they thought it was a fantastic idea to repost that content onto TikTok. Now, that immediately went viral. It took no time at all. And um, before you knew it, people all over the world were seeing this content. And then what was happening was, in the hysteria that followed, loads of people were posting short videos of themselves crying and trying to warn people about how the video started so they didn't actually come across it. And I think we're going to put up some screenshots. We're not going to show you anything that relates to the actual suicide, as I'm not going to show you suicide content, obviously. But what you are going to be looking at is people's reactions to what they'd seen. And it's only screenshots. If you imagine we were looking at this as um, short form videos, we actually had the noise, which was really quite haunting and was absolutely awful. And as a result of seeing this, we were in a school two days later, literally. And um, I still remember it. We were talking to a class of year three kids. So what are they? They're like seven, eight years old. And um, I said to them, over the last weekend, how many of you saw really upsetting content on TikTok? And we were shocked when about 80% of them said they had. And then one little boy in year three started to cry. We said, what's up? And he actually described seeing the actual video. It made me feel sick in my stomach because I'm thinking, oh my word, like this little lad is really, really little. And he started to cry and he said that he was having nightmares and couldn't sleep at night. And I said to him, I said, what did your mum say about it? What do you reckon, guys? He turned around and said she didn't have a clue. He couldn't tell her because she'd take his iPad away. And um, I guess we're sitting here today really worried that your kids of any age, it doesn't matter if they're like five, right up to 15, I think what we've realised is they're seeing traumatic content quite regularly on apps like TikTok. They're trying to self-regulate that because they are worried that if they come to you with it, your first reaction is going to be, oh my God, I can't stand you going through that. I'm going to take it away from you. And um, probably that's not helpful. So our thing here is if you let a kid on TikTok, I think the main thing is make sure they've got an account. Yeah, it's pointless saying to a kid, I'm not going to let you have an account 
that you can watch the videos. Because if you do that, there's no restriction. So it actually means I'll see absolutely everything, all of the um, swear words and everything that's involved. Yeah, you're better off having an account with restrictions on them. We'll come back to that point. But then how much stuff is on TikTok glamorizing gangs? We were talking to kids about that recently and saying, how many of you have seen videos that give a real positive um, thing about gangs? And most kids we're talking to have seen this stuff. I think we see one a couple of weeks ago with a really crazy expensive car with um, three guys on the roof of the car, one of them holding like loads of cash and showing off about how being in the gang would make you lots of money. And it was clearly linking into drugs. And then you've got the political stuff going on in the world at the moment. It doesn't matter what that is. Whatever the kids are seeing, they're then forming a really strong opinion. And in, in its worst extremes, this is how terrorists will get into the world of your kids. So if they're sitting there watching this stuff and um, I don't know, say they're feeling really rubbish at the moment and on the streets, they might be being bullied or picked on or whatever. Um, they might be in a school where they're being marginalised and made to feel really um, bad. And then all of a sudden, they see a really passionate person online that's talking about a better way. For instance, um, they might be saying that the West is really debauched. And I guess I would say to you, if you wanted to do a video to make the West look debauched, could you do it? And I think you absolutely could. Yeah, you just concentrate on all the things that would make your point. And that's what's happening with the kids. They're seeing really persuasive content. And because of the age they are, they then soak that up. And because they've looked at that persuasive content, so say you've looked at something that seemed to glamorize some um, terrorist situation. When you watch one, the actual algorithm in TikTok means you're going to see more and more and more. So whatever you initially look at, if you look at it for more than like 10 seconds, it will generate another one. Before you know it, your kid is getting a real bad view of the world. And to give you an example of this, if you um, watch a game of football, for example, because it's about something called context. Do our kids put things in context that they see online? So if you have a game of football, 90 minutes, and what happens is one of the football teams scores a goal. It's a really good goal. And there's loads of cheering, or there used to be. <laughs> you wouldn't get that now, would you? Just like, yeah, but basically a really cracking goal. And um, that gets filmed in a 30-second video. They post it on TikTok, and they put a banner over the top of it saying, what a fantastic win last night. And then a young person sees that the next morning. What is the assumption? The assumption is that team won. In fact, they would probably go up to their friends and say, what a great win last night. And then their friends start laughing at them. Because what actually happened in that game was the other team got six goals and won the match. That's all about kids seeing what someone wanted them to see. And when we worked with kids, we did this yesterday, we actually had this group of kids and we split them into two groups. Okay, So if you imagine you've got group A and group B, and the point of this exercise was to demonstrate how easily you could sway opinion online. And group A was asked to come up with a 15-second video that made the school out to be awful. They got really upset at first. They were like, but our school's the best school in the world, as clearly it was. And we said, what, you couldn't make it look bad. And then one by one, all these little horns come up on their head and they're like, yeah, we could. They started saying they would be really naughty, they would have a play fight. And basically they were describing filming pandemonium, you know what I mean, like proper acting. The other group that we asked to do a positive video of the school found that quite easy because it's a really cool school. So they were just saying they would all be dressed in their best uniforms. They would interview a teacher and across. But the point here is, say the negative video gets posted online and you've got a young person perhaps living in Norfolk that suddenly is going to move to this school in, let's say, Rayleigh in Essex. And um, the kid that's going there sees this negative video. What opinion are they going to have? And how strong is that opinion? And that's what this is all about. In its worst thing, if you've got um, riots and disturbances going on in the world, your kid will get one side of the story. So when we're bringing up our kids, please make sure they realise that they're never seeing the whole picture. And if they're starting to feel really into something, then make sure as a family you talk about what they're into and put some balance to it. Because if it's just left to the people online, you've got a nightmare on. And at nine or 10, when they make up their mind, they sort of keep that forever. I mean, say you're unfortunate enough as an eight-year-old to start supporting West Ham as a football team. You're stuck with it forever. <laughs> uh, but joking aside, yeah, whatever you start thinking at that age, 
it's hard to get rid of. And then you look at the YouTube channels they are watching. And even I've been fooled because I thought some of them are really, really good YouTube channels. And there was one that my daughter was into, and um, that was something called Kitty Zuza. And I don't expect many people would have heard of this, but it was a fun channel. It's still out there. And you had three girls in their bedroom dressing up as princesses making slime. And it must be said the slime was pretty good slime, better than my kids make. Yeah, they ruined the carpet and all sorts. But when we then, it, it was um, it was exactly a year ago. It two literally, years. Years sorry, ago. exactly two years ago. I know because it came up on my um, photo stream yeah. yesterday, I think it was. And we're, <laughs> and yours, we were in Manchester at a digital kids show. And we loved this event. It was really cool. But we bumped into one of the girls from the YouTube channel, channel Kitty Zuzar. There's me, there's me. There is John, my imaginary friend, in case John you're wondering Zoom. what he looks John like. <laughs> and um, when I see her, I admit to being a bit starstruck on behalf of my daughter, because I know that she absolutely loved her. So we went up to her, she was with her mum and um, started chatting. And you know what we realized in that moment? That Kitty Zuzar, the YouTube channel, is put together by the same people that make the Teletubbies for BBC. And we're like, yeah, having a laugh. Yeah, so this whole idea that it's a YouTube channel, yes, it is, obviously, but it's made by a full production team. All of the young people in it are actors. They've all gone for an audition, and that is filmed in a studio in London. Yet the young people watching it will be buying into the sort of um, innocence of it, and they'll all think that is really organic, and they can easily make that happen. That's not actually the case. And um, the other thing to bear in mind is when you have a TV production, it's all going to be um, filled with health and safety, which is a good thing. Because at, at this moment in time, most kids are talking about challenges. Most YouTube channels seem to get by on doing challenges. And that would be, um, I don't know, there's loads of examples. Let's have a look at one. So this is from um, one of the top YouTubers at the moment is Rebecca Zamolo. Okay. And um, in the school we were in yesterday, well, all we said to these young people was, what is a Zam fam? <laughs> I don't know what you guys would think there. We said, what is a Zam fam? And these kids got really crazy excited. So it's Rebecca Zamolo. Rebecca Zamolo. I know you guys are sitting there thinking, who's Rebecca Zamolo? <laughs> but she's got 2 billion views on YouTube. So if you've got 2 billion views on YouTube, I'm thinking you've got quite a powerful online presence and people look up to you. And then what she posts on Instagram is um, this picture that John's showing you at the moment. And that is her jumping off a first floor balcony into a big air pocket, basically. And it's on a boomerang effect. So it means as she hits it, she then goes back up. But what she posts alongside it is, would you try this? What would you reckon the chances are of your kid thinking that they might just do that? And if your kid does copy it, are they going to be as safe as a full-on TV production? Because she's probably got a medic on standby. They probably had a stunt person jump off it. And the air cushion is certainly really substantial. Your kid might be daft enough to jump into a mattress or even worse, like a trampoline or something like that. So we need to be really aware of the current trend for kids doing challenges. It is massive. You've got parkour as well. You've got um, young kids doing crazy stuff on stairways just to put videos up on TikTok. Yeah. You've got to be alive to it. In the school we were in yesterday, we asked them, we said, how many of you have done the silly salmon into a hedge? And I can hear you all thinking, what's that? Yeah. That's a challenge. And they're jumping into hedges and hurting themselves in the blinking hedges. But rather than me trying to explain all of this stuff, we thought the best thing to do is show you a viral video that has led to the silly salmon craze. So if you're wondering what the silly salmon is, this will let you know. Some of you, if you're familiar with Love Island, might tell me that this actually started on Love Island. But the question here is, what impact does this type of video on YouTube have on our little guys? Hey Jackson, silly salmon. <laughs> yeah, Luke, do what the silly fun. salmon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jackson, silly salmon. Where? There, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do the silly salmon. Where? Right there, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Oi, Jackson, do the silly salmon. Hold that. Come on. <laughs> out, the, out the gate. You're not, it's just a swim. Mate, it's not a swim. It's against the rules here. You're not allowed Let's do the silly salmon. Oh, <laughs> no. Do it. Oh, my God. Here's my phone. Oh. Silly salmon or what? Come where? <laughs> Luke, do the silly salmon. <laughs> do the silly salmon. <laughs> hey Jackson, do the silly salmon. Where? <laughs> do the silly salmon. Right, man. Hey Jackson, silly salmon. Where? Into the pool, bro. <laughs> hey Luke, do the silly salmon. Hey Jackson, silly salmon. What? Do the silly salmon. Where, bro? Directly behind you. Oh. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> silly salmon. <laughs> Luke, do the silly salmon. No. <laughs> Holy. This is high. Go, 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 go. <laughs> okay, is it us or is that just like absolutely ridiculous? I mean, from where we're sitting. And, and the problem is, if a kid decides to follow that, if you live anywhere along the um, Thames corridor, with some of the bridges that we've got along there and the closer we get to London, obviously the more telling that is. And um, we're thinking that is a bit of a problem. So when you're bringing up the kids, please remember what we just said about context, make sure that you're on top of what they're seeing, but also give them a broad warning about challenges and how that can um, end quite badly. So well, I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, beyond that, you've then got the world of gaming. And um, I think we struggle at the moment to decide what to talk about with games because there is so many issues around this. Um, on one hand, you've got the um, sort of Xbox games with an 18 on them that from where John and I are sitting shouldn't even be allowed in the world pretty much and certainly not near our kids. But then when you talk about sort of more wide stream popular games, all of them now seem to be mass multiplayer games. And that's um, what we want to be talking about because if you've got a paedophile or a gang or anyone that wants to get into a kid's world online, by far the most lucrative way to do that is by playing games. So let's have a look at some of the more popular ones. We hope that some of you will know what this one is. I'm hoping. <laughs> Does anyone know this? This is this is um among us, and at this moment in time, that is crazy huge. The school we were in yesterday, we've never seen anything like it. Because most of our sessions at the moment are being done online. So although the teachers are telling us the kids have gone nuts, we don't experience it. Yesterday we experienced it, and apparently all the kids in the school are play acting this at lunchtime in the playground, and that's no surprise because. The game's massive, and when we just spoke about Rebecca Zamolo, she promotes stuff in a big way, and on her channel for the last two weeks, they've been playing an offline version of Among Us, so we can only imagine what that channel's been paid to push the game, but what we're now left with is a highly popular mass multiplayer game. So let's have a little look, because if your kids are playing this, they might be safe, they might not, but one fact that is on the table is, this is an unmoderated game. So therefore, we should be concerned. You cannot moderate this game and you will never be able to moderate it, okay? 
It was designed by three developers who didn't realize it was going to get as big as it is. And they're a little bit shocked by the scale of growth. They're working on an Among Us 2, but it won't link to the current one. So the infrastructure will differ. Yeah, the only moderation is you can turn swearing off. And that's that is it. it. That is it. You can turn swearing off. But to put it into context, with the kids we were talking to yesterday, we said, how many of you think your parents don't realise this game is mass market player? Over half of them said their parents didn't realise. And then we said, how many of you have had rude suggestions made to you while playing this game? And that was over half of them. So I think that is why we're talking about it this evening. And in this game, you need between four and ten players and you must talk to those players. Yeah? So that's, that's the basics. So if you're a young person sitting at home in the evening and you download it and want to play it, You've got three choices on the screen that you can see there, host, public, private. So how this works is, if you're a young person that wants to host a game, you hit the create game under the host, and then you create a game. You decide in that moment whether or not you're going to have a public game or a private game. If you decide that you want to be safe and you're going to do a private game, you create a private game, and then you send a invite code to your friends. So let's say you've got seven friends at school and you want to play with them. So you're the young person, you send your seven friends an invite and they all play together. So now what you've got is eight children playing a, playing a private game of this. No problem. In fact, this would be fantastic on lockdown. If you've got three families that can't mix at the moment, we can see this being pretty good fun. You can have three families playing this. Again, safe. But it would appear that a lot of the time, what young people are doing is going into the public games, either creating them or joining the public game. And the problem there is, a lot of the time they will be playing with other OK people. We do get that. But if the guy sitting at home that's a paedophile is after kids, at this moment, we're guessing this game's going to appeal. Because they'll play in the public game, they'll run around with the kid, and they'll be really good fun. The kid will really enjoy playing with this person because they're really quite funny. And then that person will say, oh, I really enjoy playing with you. If I set up a private game, do you want to sort of um, join me on it? And the kid is going to go, yes. So they then join a private game unknown to them, hosted by the paedophile. And often they'll even invite their friends from school. So what the kid's unsighted on is they're now in the bad person. That's how these games work. And we'll come back to that point because... What the bad guy is going to want to do is probably take them into a third party app where it's going to get worse. So we'll look at that in a second, okay? Um, the other game at the minute that is mass market player and every kid right down to and including year one is into is Roblox and specifically a game called Adopt Me. And um, if we put a slide up, if we're sitting in front of any kid in a primary school, they all know this game. And in fact, when we've been working in secondary schools, we naively thought they wouldn't be into this, but year seven, for some reason, we're actually playing this as well. But basically, it is a mass multiplayer game. And the first complication is that many parents say to their kids, I'm going to let you play this mass multiplayer game, but you can't talk to people. And John and I sit there and think, oh, man. like." Well, we do ask them a confusing question <laughs> about it, don't we? When we, we show do. that picture. Yeah, we normally say to the kids when that comes up, we say, what's the name of the game in the game? Game in the game? <laughs> I'm confusing myself. The name of the game in the game. And they all say it's Roblox. So it's not just a case and of... It's oh, sorry, me. And it's Adopt Me, yeah. yeah. They don't just know it's a game. They know it's Adopt Me. And so the parent, if the parent doesn't want them to chat to people, the kid will turn around and say, all right, I'll play it without chatting. Parents then happy, but every kid will talk to people in the game. And I don't, we don't mind what you guys say, but let's look at the purpose of this game to make that point. You create a character, and that character is either going to be a parent or a baby. If you create a parent character, you walk around the game looking for a baby to adopt. If you're a baby, you sit there waiting for a parent to adopt you. So basically, straight away, you need one player to meet another player. I remember playing that when I was a kid, John. That sounds very familiar, that game to me. What was it called? Yeah, um, I know it is um, Mums, Mums and Dads. That's the one, yeah. And I know I'm joking. If, if that's two best friends from school have decided to play this together in the evening, one's the baby, one's the parent, then 
we're not that worried if I'm honest, but obviously the potential is there for them to come across really bad guys. So if the family are really determined to stop the kid talking to people, they might go into the settings and turn the chat function off. Unfortunately, the bad guys don't really want to use Roblox chat. The chat in this game and indeed the Xbox is fantastically well protected. You can't swear. And if you try and groom a child in this particular game you're looking at here, the algorithm within the chat is so good that the paedophile is likely to get caught. So they try and avoid it. So they're waiting for the kid whose parent has turned off the chat. And then when they see the kid walking along and they're not talking, they go to the bit that John's indicated with the arrows at the top of the screen. And um, what they'll say in there is jump up and down if your parents have turned off the chat. So what happens is the little guy's character jumps up and down. And then the bad guy says, oh, follow me to the school. And we actually said to the kids we were talking to yesterday, we said, why would they ask you to go to the school? And all of these children turned around and said, because there's a classroom with a whiteboard. And we said, how does that work? And I said, well, you're right on the right board. And that's how you get around the communication. And unfortunately, what they're doing is swapping a third party app information. And take yesterday as a typical example, all the kids were using FaceTime to circumnavigate the chat. We said, how many of you are using FaceTime without your parents knowing about it? And we can't get ahead around it. It was like absolutely loads of them. And um, John and I had this vision of a kid playing um, this game, Adopt Me, on an iPad. And then we thought they had a phone and they were using FaceTime. So we thought they were FaceTiming on a phone and playing a game on the iPad. And yesterday, same as every other day, these kids laughed at us and said, we don't need two devices. And we said, what do you mean? How would you do it? And they said, well, all you do is like um, you're playing the game on your iPad. You reduce the screen. You then call them on FaceTime and then reduce that in the corner and bring the game back up. And we said, what about if your parents walk in? And it was like we asked a daft question. They said, well, you push it off the screen. And then when your parents are gone, you pull it back. And if they do catch the tail end of the call, you tell them that you're talking to one of your relatives. And we're like, man, and um, we need to be worried about that. If they're, if they're using FaceTime to talk to their best friend from school, playing Roblox, then I perhaps shouldn't say this, but I think it's pretty cool. I can't help it. Yeah, I think that is really cool. But it's not cool if they're playing with a stranger. So this is where we think the parent needs to give them a strange danger story. We're not saying don't let them play mass multiplayer games, which you might think we would say. We're saying that you've got to decide whether or not your child is mature enough and sensible enough to play a mass multiplayer game. And if they spot bad, and when they spot bad, they tell you about it, we would argue they're okay. But if they can't do that, they shouldn't be anywhere near it. And on this game, the strange danger story, and I don't want to make you laugh, but um, I, I, it's not about sweets and puppies, is it? Or puppies might be a new point because um, with what I'm going to say to you now, but we need to get away from this, um, the man with sweets in a white van and replace it with what I'm going to run through now. So if we look back at the screenshot, I'm going to try and walk you through how it would look. So that is my character in Adopt Me. We are told by many kids that my character is rubbish. I'm quite hurt by that. But they keep saying to me, they said, why is your skin grey? I said, because I don't know how to make it brown or pink. And I really don't. I have no idea how to do it. And they think that is really sad. Right? But that's how it is. I've got a house in this game that is a start house and really boring. That matters because when you walk around in this game, you look out for nice houses and explore them. No one would explore my house. I have a pet in this game. And yesterday, John was goading me and he said, oh, what pet you got? And I said in front of these kids, I said, I've got a pink cat. They loved that, didn't they? They <laughs> was really impressed. They what? absolutely ripped me. It was like, oh, my God, you've got a pink cat. And that's basically a common pet that, like, ain't worth anything. But anyway, so picture this then. Your kid is walking down that road either on their own or with a school friend. And they're holding this pretty poor excuse for a pet. They see an amazing mansion. What they're going to do next is want to go and explore the mansion. So they go up to the mansion. 
They go through the front door and what they've got coming towards them is the owner of the mansion. And the owner of the mansion under their arm has got a super cool Rhydon diamond unicorn, a legendary pet in this game. And whenever we say that to kids, they go, wow, a legendary unicorn. What do you guys think is going to happen next? Because how many parents have said to their kids, don't accept unicorns from strangers? Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But all they're going to do is touch the kid's character. You get a little bit come up that says trade, and they're going to offer to trade this really rubbishy cat for this super cool unicorn. What are the kids going to do next? And what they're going to do is they're going to accept this ride on unicorn. That is about the time that the parent calls them down for dinner and it interrupts things. So the kid goes down, has their dinner, perhaps um, does their reading, goes to bed, wakes up in the morning, goes to school, goes home, has their bit of Roblox time. What do you think they're going to do next? And what they're going to do is go straight back to the mansion. Yeah. And in fact, what they've probably done at school is bragged and showed off to their friends about this rainbow unicorn or this um, amazing unicorn. And what they might do is meet their friends in the game and all turn up. So please guys, think about this with mass multiplayer games, make sure you're preparing them for things like that. If they offer something really, really cool, there's a reason for that, yeah? If they're asked to go to a third party chat, that's probably for a bad reason. So be on top of it. Even in um, Fortnite, dare I say it, so many parents say to their kids, I'm going to let you play Fortnite, which is a mass multiplayer game, but either you can't talk to people or you can only talk to your friends from school. Well, most kids are going to turn around and say, OK, then they go home from school and they do play with their three friends from school. But at half past five, one or two of their friends has their dinner. Does that mean that your kid stops playing the game? And absolutely not. What they then do is in the lobby, they're joined by a random stranger, basically, and then they play the game. They don't tell their parents that. And we're sitting here thinking, if they play the 20-minute game with the stranger, but then that is the end of the connection and they're no longer friends, then they're never going to be groomed. It ain't going to be a problem. There's only ever going to be a problem if at the end of the 20-minute game, they keep them as a friend. That's when they get groomed. So bear that in mind as a parent. Yeah? So not a case of saying you can't talk to someone. It is much more to do with you can't have a relationship with someone in the game unless the family are involved in that decision making. So please um, think carefully about that. And then when we talk about third party apps, and I'm going to try not to lose on this because this is so important. When we um, have spoke recently to Essex Police, they told us, and when I say they, we're talking about the online investigation team. They told us that at the minute, most kids that are groomed in games are done over an app called Discord that John's just indicated, okay? So basically, they play the game and then they get persuaded to download and use Discord that John's showing you here. Now, Discord, to some of us, I'm not sure how many of you know this, there might be some of you sitting out there now saying, I had no idea what that is. And you might be tempted to think that kids wouldn't know what that was. And when um, I was first here, because I'm a user of it, because I'm a big gamer, but I couldn't get my head around how someone perhaps in year three would have ever heard of it, because they all have. And um, But I'm going to show you how they would have heard of it. And the reason we're going down the road, we're going to go now is because I, I think I said earlier, I let my five-year-old play Minecraft. So let's have a little look at that and show you how easily our kids come across these apps. So in Minecraft, if you go and look at my Minecraft account, many of you might think this is a really boring game. I'll get that, yeah. This is the only page that I ever really worry about, guys, yeah, because I click into my realm. I'm happy in my realm. I pay money. That means I've got a realm where my kids can go and the only people they talk to is me. Fantastic. But what we've learned is loads of kids play the server games. I didn't even know that these existed until recently. Yeah? And what the kids do is there's a button at the top of that main page that um, they click on. John's just put a yellow um, oblong around it or rectangle. <laughs> I don't know my shapes tonight. Yeah, you click on that and it gives you a list of servers. Servers sounds so confusing, I think, if you're a non-techie. But all it really is, is mini games, but they call it a server. You click on the top one, because we think they might click on the top one. That then gives you 
the world really you walk into um where john's going to show you now and that is my character in the foreground beyond it where john's indicating is loads of players from all over the world walking around in that game and as you might imagine you can talk to all of them people strange danger yeah big time and if you turn around you look at this little character sitting there and he's got a little bit on it that says tap to talk what are your kids going to do next without a doubt they're going to tap it and want to talk and when you do that i think what we're worried about is on the drop down it says join our discord so say you've got a six or seven year old into minecraft and they see that we think they're going to be going what's that but as you can imagine, they're going to press that button. And unfortunately, that gives you a link to actually go to Discord. And when you go to Discord, which is either a website or you can download it as an app, it prompts you to set up an account, which most kids seem to be more than adept at doing, and that then you use it. And if you're playing a game, the idea is that it supplements the game. So, for example, I'm a gamer that plays in a um, team game and I'm in a team. And my team, to be in it, you must download Discord. It's one of the rules of my team. They say you must have Discord because it's a strategy game and Discord helps you to have strategies. And um, don't want to lose you here, but I'm going to show you a screenshot. And I'm really sorry if this looks like a load of weird stuff. But on this screen, to the left, you've got the servers that I'm part of on Discord, because it's very much server-based. I'm in the middle of it. You're watching a server that I'm actually involved in, and I'm talking. So that conversation that's going on is me with my gamer friends outside of the game. Someone has posted a picture, which is of some gameplay. They, it's like a map. They've drawn a circle on the map. And then what they're saying is, can we all please go online into the game at the same time and attack this bit of the map. So I then reply on Discord, yeah, 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 when I get home, I'll get online. And then we all go online and we all know what to do. You can't actually sort that out in the game itself. So that is why gamers use Discord. So if you're using it for good reason, no problem. And if you've got a kid that actually set downloads Discord and all they do is set up a private group for them and their friends, they're not going to have a problem. And where they might do that is if they're playing um, Among Us that we spoke about earlier, and they want to play, if we go back to that idea of the one kid and their seven mates that have set up this game, if that same kid sets up a Discord and invites their seven mates, that's safe as well, because you've got a closed group of seven kids, nothing's going to go wrong. But if it was the other option that we spoke about earlier, where actually you had the bad person set up the Discord, then you've got a problem because they'll be running this closed group. They'll be chatting to the kids all the time. They'll be doing things that the kids really like. They'll be sharing gaming tips and it'll be a really cool place to hang out. But after four weeks, what the person's going to do is kick the kid off of the Discord channel. And you might be sitting there thinking, why would they do that? And um, what they're going to do is then ask the kid to do a challenge or a dare to get back onto the channel. And how many kids have told us that they would do that challenge? And it's pretty much the whole lot. And when we spoke to the police, that is how the kids are getting caught out. They'll do something that they think is a bit weird, but actually they're being exploited. So please be on top of this stuff. And um, I think I want to go back to what we mentioned earlier. because we spoke about TikTok, didn't we? And um, I, we didn't talk about perhaps the settings side of it. And I think that is... Um, worth going back to so if you want to stop bad guys grabbing their video then well firstly all they've got to do is get their finger and put it on the kids video when they do that you're going to get this little i'm hoping this works <laughs> you, you should be getting a white box card that's because you put the finger on the video and it says at the top save video as soon as the bad guy presses that they now own a copy of the kids video now we don't want them to do that. So we would advise you as parents to actually turn that off in the settings. But the best way to control your kids on TikTok is to download two accounts, a parent account and a kid's account. Now, that sounds a bit complicated, but you need two different devices. So if you're a family, 
you might have mum have the parents account and then on dads you might have the kids account or you might actually let the kid have the kids account but let's show you what you do so if you want to create a parents account you need to download tiktok and then on the front page at the bottom you'll see a little button that says me hopefully it's in the bottom right hand corner you click on that button and it opens up a white page at the top of the white page you've got three dots click the three dots and it opens up a really boring big page halfway down that boring page you've got a bit that says family pairing can we all see that so it says family pairing click on that and you've got a blue and a red option you need to click on the blue option that says parent and that then will give you a qr code so hold that thought you've now got a qr code what you then do is repeat that process on the kids account so you go through all the steps until you go to family pairing and then rather than the blue option you go for the red option that says teen okay and when you click on the red option it will give you a camera screen and all you've got to do is take the camera screen point it at the qr code on your account and it will link the two together just like that then as a parent dare i say it you can go into the privacy settings and do whatever you want to do but we would ask you to be progressive on this if they're younger then totally put them on private and everything that goes with that but obviously if they're 12 coming on 13 you might then be wanting to let the rope out of that bit yeah but it, remember whatever you do there's one on that list that says about stopping the downloading from the screen and you definitely definitely want to do that even if you've got a 13 year old that is out on this app we would strongly recommend them to not let people easily grab their videos because that's going to be out there forever that's TikTok. um snapchat we are worried about but as we said earlier we're worried about cliff top parents that perhaps say to their kids you can't have it and um we had a cliff top parent situation in recent times where what happened was you had a girl that was um wasn't allowed it till she was 13. she got it and went mad and when i say went mad what she did was she was um basically adding anyone and everyone literally yeah she amassed loads of friends really really quickly and she actually ended up forming a relationship with one of them an online relationship with someone from Chelmsford in essex and um that ended up being like a instagram relationship whatever that looks like and um she really liked this guy but when she landed loads of people on snapchat this guy was on snapchat what she didn't know and she genuinely didn't know was that he was a gang member so he was in a gang she'd also added two people from an opposing gang in Chelmsford. she didn't know and this only came to light when she was walking along in her hometown a car turned up three guys got out of the car manhandled her put a phone in her face and made her diss the gang live on instagram yeah and her world sort of come apart somewhat and that was all because not only had she added random people on snapchat she also had the snap maps feature enabled that means she wasn't on something called ghost mode so everyone on snapchat see where she was so let's show you how to disable that i think this is going to be quite important there so on um, snapchat if you decide to give your kids the app please make sure that on the front screen you've got a button near the bottom that looks like a, um, a little sat nav symbol it used to say map on it up until a week ago but i keep changing it um, if you press that button it then comes up with a map there's a thing <laughs> on the map this is um john's snapchat and you can see john on the map this is what any stranger would see if he hasn't protected it they put their finger on the screen stretch it out and it goes right down to his location and if he walks around the bad guy is going to see him walking around that's how this girl was able to be caught out so easily you have to deal with that what you need to do is well all you've got to do is press on the button that john's showing you at the top that opens up a white page and at the top of the white page you need to turn ghost mode on it's a simple button you just press it it turns blue and then you're protected be careful because you get this annoying pop-up where you've got to press until turned off and i know it sounds weird we would recommend if you've got a kid in year six that might be the time to introduce them to snapchat but when you do that 
the best way to do it in a controlled way is just have you as their friend, literally, and it's just parent and child mucking around with it for a while. So they get the hang of it, you get the hang of it. And um, if I was going to let the rope out, it would probably be when I go for familiarisation day for big school. So if they're going up to big school, that's when I would change it. And if you've got, um, I know some of you guys might have kids going to selective um, schools quite possibly, if that is happening, so they're not going with all their friends to normal school, we really would say that by the time they go on that familiarisation day, you might let them add people as friends that they meet on that day because what they're actually going to do through the summer is form a friendship group that ultimately will see them good when they start school in September. Yeah, so when they turn up, they've already, already had a big group of friends. If you've got a clifftop kid, they're going to turn up on day one and pretty much they're going to be like we were in 1990. So please think about that. Um, also, as um, our friend said at the beginning, and, um, you might have been listening thinking, oh my word, what, what are you talking about? We could be found from a photo. And um, I'm going to share some bits with you that just make the point that was being made right at the beginning. And um, bad guys want kids to send them pictures of themselves. They know that a lot of kids won't do that. So well, what they're e doing... E-safety is good, isn't it? E-safety is good, yeah. Stop them doing that. But they will take a blinking picture of a game. They will take um, a screenshot of a telly with Fortnite on it and share it. And as soon as they do that, if the location services are turned on in the camera while in use, then you've got a problem. Yeah, because they might have just pinged your address. And let's have a look at how quick and easy it is. So... I took a picture of one of my daughter's toys at home. This is a LOL doll. Kids got excited about this yesterday. <laughs> but I took that picture on an iPhone. I send it to John and John receives the picture. All John had to do was go to a website. The website that John went to is called Pick Two Maps. That's P-I-C, the number two, M-A-P. And he's looking at the front page here. He clicks on the blue button that says select photo file. And then he does exactly that. He double clicks on the picture of the toy. It takes roughly two seconds to give him my home address. And what you've got there is a pin on the map that is literally on the roof of my house. And I've edited this because it actually came up with my home address ridiculously. And as you can imagine, someone could put an awful lot of pressure on your kid if they come up with that detail. Adults are getting caught out by this through um, adverts and things like that. So for example, say you've got a nice car, like a nice mini or something, and um, you want to sell it. So you put it up on a selling site and um, then someone comes back to you and says, oh, I really like the car, but I can't see the wheels. Can you text me a picture of the wheels? And I think I'm going to have it. And you text them the picture rather than send it back through the ad. Then this is what happened with this particular car. This was a lady we were working with. She was horrified actually. It put a pin on the map on the roof of our house and we've edited this, but it actually came up with a house name and road. She was like quite horrified. And obviously you would wake up in the morning and your car has disappeared. Um, all of this stuff that we're talking about is an issue and all of it is quite a big issue. But what we've realized working in the community is a lot of it is about positioning ourselves in a way when our kids can come to us. I think we've um, spoke to some of you guys before about this and um, uh, culturally we might have quite a strong line that we're running to with really strong family values and I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes your family values are being pushed to limits by um, what the kids are doing online and that is really really tricky yeah and it's making sure that no matter what the overarching family position is Amongst it all, make sure that every young person has got a safe place that they can go and talk. Yeah, because if our um, reaction the first time they come and talk to us is to go top end, get angry and take something away, then unfortunately in our experience, they'll then potentially carry on behind your back. And there's a limit to how long you can stop them from doing that. You might get away with it, in primary school but once they get to big school where there's other people can hand them a device and things like that we lose it a bit so in the formative years it's about trying to join them on the journey rather than fighting them and that way you should maintain your family values a lot more if they're seeing an issue online what you want to be doing as a family is chatting about it and then perhaps 
question it in line with the family values and um, have the kid as part of that conversation. And then they'll probably see the light rather than um, you know, go down the wrong path. So this is really important stuff. And remember that everything they've done online has value. And I think a story that reminds us of this and a story to close really is about a young lad called um, Matt that certainly inspired me as a gamer, but it also upset me. And um, this young lad called Matt Steen, he became disabled at the age of 12. And when he became disabled, he became a wheelchair user and had a terminal prognosis. He was not expected to live for that long. Ultimately, he lost his fight for life in his 20s. And um, when Matt was alive, he needed 24 seven care, including at night. He needed assistance breathing and his levels of communication were really, really low. And when he died, his dad, as you can imagine, was devastated, but truly devastated. But what his dad was really beating himself up about was how his son had never lived. And he needed to say words at his son's funeral, but he couldn't see any positives. His son had never had a friend, let alone a best friend. And his son had never had a girlfriend or anything like that. And he really couldn't find a positive. And in them dark days, what happened was a young lady called Lisette turned up at the family home and she knocked on the door. And um, when dad answered it, she said that she was Matt's girlfriend. As you can imagine, his dad thought this was some sort of sick joke and wasn't impressed. But what transpired very quickly was Matt was a massive player of the mass multiplayer game World of Warcraft. And Matt had been playing this for years and years. And he had friends all over the world. And by friends, I mean really close friends that he spoke to every day. This young lady he'd been talking to for about eight years every single day. And I had a fantastic relationship, albeit it's in the um, weird world of gaming that perhaps I inhibit. And as a result of this, his dad actually changed his gravestone to reflect his game attack, which was Ibelin. And loads of people from all over the world attended his funeral. And um, I guess what we're thinking is, in his lifetime, the nighttime carers used to pull their hair out because this lad was an absolute pain at 11 o'clock at night because he wanted to stay online. And I guess what we're saying is, say with a limited understanding of the situation, someone when he was 15 had deleted the game and banned him from it, what would be the sort of outcome of that? And um, I hope that just gets us thinking. It's just about everything the young person does online has value. It doesn't mean we like it but it has value. So if we choose to take it away, never do it with our eyes shut, yeah? Always remember you are doing something significant, yeah? Because if it was a tangible toy, like a 350 pound Lego set that you've just melted down on the fire, I think as a parent, you know what you've just done. But if you destroy someone's Minecraft account that they've been working on for a year, you might not, yeah? So please. And I think one of the questions, John, that really sort of, disturbs me when we're talking to young people is when we ask them how many of them are more frightened of the parents than they are the bad people i mean that's that's crazy isn't it uh, that is what we are up against so we've been asking that lately what a horrible question that is isn't it we've been saying to the kids we say how many of you are more worried about your parents reaction than the bad guys and you wouldn't believe it it's always over half of them and uh, uh, it, it depends on where we're working as to how bad that is and um, you guys need to be really alive to that yeah you don't want your kids thinking that they're more scared of you than the bad guys that's just not a terrible no, it's situation it's still all that communication though isn't it john really that's at the yeah. end of the day it's yeah the whole thing the, with them, really. the whole thing is about communication and um, we talk about something called the internet express and um that involves a parent and a child holding hands turning up at a station if you can imagine this yeah, so you both turn up holding hands and then what's going to happen next is the kid breaks the grasp of the adult, runs down a platform and takes a seat on the Internet Express. They've heard it's a really cool train going on a really exciting journey, albeit they don't know where it's going. They can't wait to go off at all the stops it pulls into. They can't wait to go off at TikTok, YouTube, Among Us and everywhere else it stops. The parent on the platform has a conscious decision to make on day one. They could either stand there, wave their kid off and hope they get to their destination safely or they can reluctantly hold their kid's hand, walk down the platform, get on the train with them, and actually get off at each stop it pulls into and check 
that is a safe environment to walk around in and at the appropriate time leave them to their own devices once you've finished nurturing them and um, that's what you think we need to do and how many parents at the minute are standing on the platform having waved their kid off and that's what we've got to I mean, be you, don't, you watch Rebecca Zanola you play Minecraft <laughs> well that happened in the um, summer in fairness and this sounds terrible I don't know about your kids and how they're dealing with Covid but my daughter had been back at school for about three weeks and she loved being back at school trust me and um one night she looked really sad and I said to her, I said, what's up? I said, you look really sad. And she turned around and said, I am sad. And I said, why are you sad? And she said, I don't know. And she burst into tears. Can you imagine? I'm thinking, oh my God, like, what's wrong? I said, come on. I said, let's talk. I said, yeah, there's nothing that you can't tell me. Let's talk. She goes, dad, she goes, I don't want to talk. She goes, no. I said, why? She goes, all you want to talk about is comprehension. Come back up. That's what she said to me. And I said, no, no, no. I said, seriously, I said, I will talk about whatever you want. Yeah, I want you to be happy. And she goes, and she wanted to talk about Rebecca Zamolo, the YouTuber. And you know what I agreed to do? I actually agreed to sit down and watch it with her. And you know what? That was probably the best thing I've done for her this year. And now she thinks I'm really interested in it. And she talks to me about it at least every other day. But what it does mean is by watching that about once a week, I've got a really good take on what she's seeing and what she's into. And I would recommend you guys think about that. If your kid's really into Minecraft, once a week, take half hour out and say, oh, can I play? Play it with you for half hour. Even if you're bored. Or Among Us would be. Yeah, Among Us might be an example, yeah. Have a family game of Among Us. But please, guys, work out how you can be a part of the journey. Don't let it be a solo journey they're going on because the stakes are too high from where we're sitting. If... um following today you need help and advice and you're thinking um i'd like to read stuff because um, that's what you want to do if you go and visit our website and the um address will come up in a second if you go to the parent carer tab on that that's been updated even further today i think if you go into there you'll see loads and loads of help and advice so for example you'll get parent advice on um roblox parent advice on um many other games really on Fortnite. tiktok Fortnite. And there's a bit in there that says settings. If you're sitting there, you're worried about this location services and click on the settings tab, then choose what sort of device you've got, which is either an Android or Apple, and it will help you out, hopefully. If you're on social media, then please give us a look on Facebook. We've got about 24,000 followers, I think, which apparently is quite a few. Um, and we are in the future looking at doing quite a lot of live Q&As on that. But what we're quite good at doing on Facebook is if we're worried about something, we put it out quite quickly. And every day of the week now, we get parents asking us advice on Facebook. And in fairness, we're good for that. We will give advice. And if we keep hearing about something bad, we'll put it out there. If you're on Twitter, it would really make us happy if you can give us a follow. And we don't normally say this, but... We were right twits. When yeah, we went right. onto Facebook, we obviously amassed 24,000 followers, which is really cool. On Twitter, I think we've got about 1,000, which is really rubbish. So we like to get stuff out there. So if you are on Twitter, that would really make our night if you can give us a follow. But um, that's us at the moment. We're going to hand back to Kemi. And um, I'm quite sure that some of you guys will, might want to ask us questions, I think. But um, thank you very much, um, Kemi. Thanks so much for that. Honestly, some of the stuff you shared, I must say, got me really, really emotional. And part of it is the fact that I have two teenage daughters and a eight-year-old, and you never know what's happening. And you know, but it's a bit reassuring in a way to know that uh, there are things we could do as parents to actually prevent the otherwise happening to them. And um, I'm just going to say to Tola to coordinate the question. And if she's been taking notes as well, if there's any question that people want to ask. Uh, I just, uh, but before I do that, I just want to ask, is there a particular age range that parents need to uh, begin to uh, get a bit worried about what their kids are doing online? Thanks so much for that. I think... The moment that we the moment that we let them play a mass multiplayer game is the moment that we need to worry. And I think the first and most important decision for the family 
is when is your kid mature enough and knowledgeable enough to start that journey? We wouldn't let them in a mass market player game unless you trust that they know what they're doing. So that means you've had a chat about strange danger. You've initially played the game with them and let them in. So for example, my five-year-old, I wouldn't let play a mass multiplayer game. So at the minute, if he plays Minecraft, I make sure he plays it on a closed server run by me and it's just me, my daughter and him. And I wouldn't let him go beyond that perhaps until he's seven or eight. And then I might think again, like so for example, my nine year old is only now, and it literally is only now in the last six months, I now let her play um, Roblox. And when she plays Roblox, she uses the Roblox chat because the Roblox chat is really, really safe. And she's already on a number of occasions told me about weird things. And then I've shown her how to report it as inappropriate putting out there. So if you're asking me in my family setup, then the age is nine. But I also realise that some families might be able to put that lower. Some families for whatever reason, may need to go higher. So it's yeah. a really difficult question. That's, I mean, that's how we look at it, isn't it, really? We It's all about the age or the maturity of the child. Not It's their cognitive ability mm. to understand stranger danger in a game, really, isn't it? It's not, yeah. it's Every not kid's about different. the age of the game. It's that yeah. did your child be yeah. safely. Well, once they're 11 or 12, they should <laughs> be OK. And I, I know in, in your world, Kerry, your, your guys should be all right, as long as they know that they can um, talk about it. But, yeah, everyone's different. Sounds a bit of a uh, I, I know I know they're right, but you know, I've been on this for a couple of times, which is why I'm <laughs> strongly recommending it for a lot of parents and uh, I hope they will take the tips on board. Uh, I'm not worried really, really about mine. It's just the amount of information and what is going on out there is uh, it's a bit um, unnerving in a way. So uh, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, I'll pass you on to Tola to just see what she's uh, got. Thank you. Thank you so much, the two Johns. Thank you. Very informative as usual. You know, a lot of information. I mean, sometimes the information can be so overwhelming. You just think, you know what? The only way to keep my children safe is just to keep them offline. That's it. Not on anything because to be monitoring them, it's like, you know, and what I was doing as I was listening, I was thinking to myself, okay, right. So when, as you were talking, especially the game, I thought to myself, cause my son, my, my son, he's 14. So he did say to me a few weeks ago, he said, oh, uh, mom, I don't play Fortnite anymore. It's boring. So he said, there's a new game he plays. So I was like, okay, what's the name of that new game? I can't remember. So as you put among us up I took a picture of it and I sent it to my husband I said I said go and ask go and ask him what's the new game that he was saying he plays now <laughs> and it happened to be among us <laughs> you know and I thought wow but anyway he, he's kind of like off his games for a while anyway we've taken his phone and his games for a while I'm um, not sure for how long and then um and then when you now put the you know the whatsapp the the new one that they talk on well that one that well it's new to me because I've never seen it before so I took a picture of it and I said to my husband oh go and ask him if he knows what this app is so my husband went to go and ask him and he was like he said he, he doesn't know I'm like oh, I can get it out of him so <laughs> I called him down I said I said what's that app I said I said they said all, all teenagers all teenagers that play games should know that app what's the name of that app he's like oh yeah yeah um I forgot the name I know it and I, so I told him and he said yeah yeah that's it I said okay you know so it's 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 quite it's quite amazing because you'll see some things that you've never seen before you just think well I've never seen that before but then you ask them and they're they're so into it you know they know all about it and everything and I think that's why I was saying at the beginning it's not just for the children you know we're keeping our children safe online but you know it's for the parents as well to be aware what is out there what is being used you know and all these challenges because there's so many challenges and you'll be surprised you ask them what a challenge is and they know about it and i'm just learning about the salmon today you know kind of thing so i think yeah <laughs> i think i think it's definitely 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 something that you know parents we need to we even need to i mean we can't just do this once a year we need to like be constantly updated constantly reminded about you know a lot of things that's going on and for those of you that are on here you know on Facebook if you have any questions please do put it in the chat box you know the two Johns are happy to answer any questions but you know what 
uh, one of the questions um, says, um, can you protect photos on Facebook and Instagram? I know you've talked about obviously protecting photos on Snapchat and, and TikTok and things like that, but can we protect photos on Facebook and Instagram? Um, in the settings on um, Facebook and Instagram, you can um, choose not to share the location. I think most people actually share it. Like we tag things, don't we? We tag locations, everything else. So I think once upon a time, people used to really panic about Facebook and um, they wouldn't put pictures of their kids on Facebook. So they thought, oh, like um, weirdos are going to collect the pictures. In our experience, they actually don't do that. I might say daft, but as long as you're quite sensible on things like Facebook and um, you know most people on it, that's not the issue. If you've got weirdos looking at your kids, then they actually want that one-on-one -on -one with them. And that's not normally going to be for a Facebook account. But if you want to protect your location, you certainly can in Facebook and obviously Facebook own Instagram, but you have to go into the privacy settings and turn it off. But I don't say it's dark, but if you're anything like me and I really like social media, I find it quite cool that I can look at a map on Facebook that will tell me where I've been in the past. So it's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? Not be a part of issue, have you? I'm not being part of the issue. Yeah, we're normally we're all over the place, but um, the, the bad guys used to mine locations from social media, and that's what we used to talk about. Now, the vast majority of social media um, sites protect the location. So, for example, if you sent a picture of your car to someone over WhatsApp, by default, WhatsApp should strip out the um, data. So, by far, the biggest issue is this first generation photo that someone sends over texting or things like that. So, we're not seeing nowadays a big issue with location in Instagram and FaceTime. I hope that makes sense. It used to be a thing, but now you can definitely turn that off in the privacy. Although it might, it might disappoint your experience with FaceTime if you're into locations. So it's a tricky one, really. Yeah, true, true. Um, is there any other questions? Kemi, do you have any other questions? I don't think there's, let me see if I've missed any. Um, I don't think I, don't I can see. Okay. Not that I can see, and um, I'd just like to say that people can leave us their feedback or comments instead if there's no question. I want to believe that the Jones have done their good job. Uh, so I, so yeah, one more question um, to the John. So, I mean, with social media, obviously there's different types of social media, like TikTok, Snapchat, all of that. But I mean, based on obviously you go into schools, you talk to a lot of children and you're aware that they know so much. But I mean, obviously, you know, talking to parents, what age, what is the ideal age to start allowing your children to go on social media? Because they're going to want to go on at some point. What would you say is the ideal age? Um, proper social media like um, Instagram and things like that I would say in year six around about February now that's quite specific isn't it because what you're trying <laughs> to do is set them up for big school because I don't say staff but as a parent I don't know what you guys have realised but once they go to big school your influence um, drops quite quickly whereas when they're in year six you've still definitely got that ability to be um really, really nosy and really, really involved. And so, nurturing. You're still and, and you're still in the nurturing phase. So that's what we would say. Regards things like FaceTime, that's probably a little bit different because that's equivalent to a phone call in some respects. So like, for example, in lockdown, I'm finding it really nice that my daughter, although she uses my account, I think that that's the difference here. She hasn't got her own account, but she FaceTimes her best friend in her house. So it sounds um, daft but they both put their dolls to bed of a night, for example. And what they're doing is filming their dolls and talking about what they're wearing and they're just keeping yeah, up with each other. So yeah. I think that's really nice. But again, that is using my FaceTime account and it's very controlled. But when you talk about social media, as in like on a wider scale, which is going to be things like WhatsApp, Instagram, FaceTime, then probably at the earliest, year six. Same time you let them out the door, really, I suppose. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Well, you're yeah. letting them out the door for the first yeah, time. Yeah, trust them to go out in the yeah. real world, and then, yeah. Yeah, does that answer? So that's, that's yeah, yeah. Time. That well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't have thought year six, but I think with 
so much media around now and you know like with a lot of people on me social media and them wanting to be on social media it actually makes sense you know as long as we stay on top of it as well what, yeah what we're saying with year six is that's the that's your training bit before they hit yeah. year seven so between february and <laughs> september you've got six months of training you can do with them <laughs> that's why like john said with snapchat you have the account they have the account just the two of you you practice you play you become proficient you find the pitfalls they find the pitfalls and then they're trained, if that makes sense. So that's your, <laughs> that's your, that's your L plates. The L plates before you have your test in September. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's been so helpful. There's been a few thank yous as well in the chat box as well. Excellent yeah, session as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Kemi, that's all the questions. That's all the comments. So over to you. I mean, one question that nobody asks, but I'm going to ask is when is the next one? <laughs> thank you so much and uh, uh it's just to say that it took uh, a bit of effort to get the two joints on and i want to say a massive thank you for granting the request to be here i want to feel personally i feel like i've gained something new and something to cascade within the community but just to buttress on what you said earlier about our values and how it does impact on how we set control and how our children may actually perceive uh, the way we discipline them or, you know, I use that word discipline because it's quite uh, relevant to our community uh, to, you know, when we are setting boundaries, we have to be, uh, be very aware not to be setting our children up for more danger. Uh, it's, it's okay, like if we've heard, to control how and you know manage the way they get into the social media world. But what is not right is to give a blanket ban just because we are afraid. Internet has come to stay with us. And it's gonna be, you know, forever. There's so many things. I struggled at the beginning of this. My daughter had to help me out. Imagine if she can't use the tool. How will I how will we be able to, you know, do th these things? And it's just part of life. And I wanna encourage everybody watching to not just embrace it, but try and use it as well, because most of the things that is happening in the African community largely is the fact that we think of internet we think social media we think facebook we think instagram you know we just think about sharing pictures but we don't really think what is affecting our children out there what are they using what are they what is impacting their life who are they talking to who is influencing them you know these are things that uh, there was a program on uh, netflix the other day we were talking about this and there were so many outcry how they about kids dancing, you know, in a very sexual way and things like that. Uh, it, it wasn't shocking because if you are part of programs like this and you can see and talk to your teenagers, I mean, there's certain things that my girls would say to me and I would just be like, you know, I have to control myself, not to overreact, you know, in a negative way that will make them feel like, no, we don't need to talk to mommy about such again, you know. There's some questions that these kids have and except you make yourself available and familiar with what they see, what they hear, and the people they mingle with, knowing their languages they speak, and part of which is knowing some of this hub, downloading them, using them yourself, spending time with them while they're using it, have a conversation around it. If you have fears, try to, in a constructive way, discuss with your children on how you can you know, manage the situation and not just enforcing your values negatively. For instance, I will share with you. Yesterday night, uh, someone's daughter was talking to me about uh, you know, uh, they're just teenagers and the girl wants to be, uh, a parent are enforcing Muslim on her, but she wants to be an atheist. And what will naturally happen is, this girl will pretend to be a Muslim at home at just age 12. And then when she's how, she's something else. I think there's a boundary that we need to set. It cuts across every aspect of our parenting life. What it is our kids are doing. How can we best, best support them 
to be a better version of themselves. We, should, we are not cloning them to be us. What we are doing is raising children to be independent adults that will not be damaged by our own restrictions. And I pray that God will help us, you know, I can't, I can't but use that word pray. In our, you know, we believe in prayer. Prayer works, but without works, prayer is nothing. So do your best, however way you can. And uh, before I go, I'll just say, please kindly leave us a, uh, a comment. This program is uh, being funded by Award for All UK. And uh, I'm so particularly grateful to them because without them, we'll not be having tonight. And also as part of this program, we're having some mentoring sessions. So if you feel in any way that you have been strongly impacted or maybe your child or you know, you or maybe someone you know have kind of like have a negative experience with this, especially with gangs and uh, sexual uh, exploitation or what have you, or any, maybe they've been exposed to constant that may make them suicidal or in any way, we have mentoring program, counseling sessions that you can tap into. We can help signpost you to the right people within the community, especially if you live around excess. We have professionals who will help uh, get you the right support to put your kids and yourselves or whoever is affected back on track. What will not be right is for you to keep quiet about all this information you've heard tonight. It does not matter which shape, we are not naming and shaming anybody. What we are saying is we can make life better for ourselves, for our kids especially. So don't keep quiet. And uh, Tola Nibanjo as well, she's uh, uh, founder of uh, Listener 101. So I will say she leaves the number in the comment box uh, and you can reach, uh, download the app. I think you just launched the app. Parents can download the app, you know, feelings of whatever the kids are going through. If they cannot talk to you or you feel like they are struggling to speak about their situation, get them to download the app and they will be speaking to professional in a safe space. I mean, teenagers now, you know, young collect kids, they can speak and pour themselves out and they can get the right help and support before things get out of hands. That is the key for this evening. And uh, for us, you can get us via info at climax. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, can, you can't believe I missed that, right? I, I will send an email out to all the attendees. If there's a particular problem with logging on tonight, I don't know how I managed to mess that up. We have about 35 people registered, but who only see nine people. And that was because there was a, I had lots of uh, WhatsApp messages coming through that there was a big uh, hiccup with the login details. And maybe because this is, usually we use the Zoom, you just send the link. Yeah, I mean, I got, I got, a, I got a few, but I directed them because it was on Facebook Live, so yeah. I directed them to Facebook. Yeah, and we've, we've had a very good audience on Facebook <laughs> as well. At the point, it was around thirty something viewing yeah. us live. So I want to believe we've done a very good job, and thank you so much for all our panelists, all our attendees as well. We say thank you so much for joining us. Hope you have a very, very wonderful evening. And if anything, please do not forget to always uh, contact Cam uh, Climbers Family Hub. And we'll do all our best to, to serve. I'm, 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 I'm so sorry if I'm a bit stammering tonight. It's a, a bit overwhelming for me. And uh, just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, on Sunday is a learning support workshop. If you can join us, please do make your time to join us. And on that note, don't let me take too much of your time. I want to say good night to everybody. I don't want to know if the two Johns have any comment to make. I'll say goodbye to everyone. And then I'm off. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for letting you us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And don't thank forget, you can you can you can join the Facebook page for the two Johns as well, and they can be contacted there. Drop any comments and ask them any questions yeah. there. It's E S T E Safety Training on Facebook. E S T E Safety Training. That's where you get all the updated information as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.